Welcome to the world of Group Home Riches, where you can achieve financial freedom while making a positive impact on society. Are you tired of working long hours for someone else? Do you dream of being your own boss and creating a better future for yourself and others? Look no further. With Group Home Riches, you can invest in real estate and provide a valuable service by offering safe and comfortable homes for individuals in need. The number one investment in real estate. And start building a better future for yourself and those around you. Let's make a difference together with Group Home Riches. So I got into real estate back in 2011. The economy wasn't great. I was a teacher before that at a small private school and I had a degree in linguistics from a good school, but just couldn't find any jobs. So I ended up becoming a teacher, a teacher's assistant actually. The school was fast growing. I ended up with my own class of third and fourth graders, but I was also recently married and six months into marriage, uh, we found out we were pregnant and I was making less than 30 grand. I was at the school from 7 a.m. or maybe 7.30 till about 6 p.m. because I did the after school program too. Like I did everything I could to get some money and our rent was going up and this baby was on the way and I was just like, I can't spend my entire life at the school and get paid nothing. But my wife was a transaction coordinator for a real estate team. She did all their paperwork and they were doing a ton of foreclosures at the time, but they were doing like a hundred a year. So I met with the team leader and just was like, hey, I have a background in sales. I've done pretty well. I've done door to door you know, selling Comcast and selling dry cleaning to your door services. And I did pretty <laughs> well at that. And it just was like, hey, do you think real estate could be something I'd be good at? And he said, yeah, give it a shot. So by the end of the school year, I had my real estate license. It takes about four months in California. And man, one week out, I did my first open house and met somebody a week later, got him in contract on a home. And uh, that started my real estate career. That is so awesome. So you were making 30K and you were living in Northern California. Oh yeah. And I mean, rents were about half of what they are now. So mm -hmm. we were in a two bedroom, one bath apartment for, I think it was 1200 a month. And it was about to go up to like 1400. And I honestly was like, I don't think we can afford this and diapers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't much to live on. In real estate, you're taught to just sell more homes if you want to make more money. So I ended up building a team. That's where the brokerage came from. I uh, just got to a point where I, I couldn't sell any more homes myself. I remember one month I sold eight homes and I made a lot of money, but I barely saw my family. I was working all weekend, showing a ton of properties to buyers who wanted to look at you know 10 to 20 homes each. And it was just a crazy lifestyle. So it was I was successful in most people's eyes, but I felt like I was letting my family down. So I decided to build a team and then work on, you know, leverage and leadership. Ended up starting a brokerage 2016, Keller Williams office, and still have ownership in the office, got 160 agents, but I decided really to focus on investing in just my sales team in the last couple of years. Love it. Yeah. So you learned quickly with the real estate thing you had created. It was well-paying, but it was a job. You created a job yep. for yourself and then you just, you learned that you need to work on a business right? Exactly. And I think that shows up in our sober living homes as well. The way we built that is so that it doesn't take a ton of time for me because I have to focus on these other things. Um, but man, the impact you can make when it's not all on you is so much bigger than if I was doing everything myself. When did you find uh, group home riches? You know, when was the start of like looking into how to do this thing? Yeah, that was probably end of 2020, early 2021. And that's when I got my first, that's when I decided to turn a flip into this type of home. Because I heard of somebody in Phoenix doing it. I know there's a lot of group homes and, and stuff in Phoenix, but those same organizations that they were partnering with did not operate locally in California. So I had to like, I felt like I was figuring it all out from scratch. And that's when I connected with you guys. Perfect. And so you got a deal. Did you buy the property first or did you kind of start doing the networking and stuff before you got the property? So we actually changed course mid renovation. I was actually, I ended up buying one of my listings. They just wanted to get their, there was a tax law change in California. Uh, they wanted to get their money out of California so they could pass along their property to their kids without having to pay this big estate tax. So they dropped the price 50 grand. And I was like, if you're going to do that, I'll buy it. And found it. I had a private lender who funded the purchase and the renovation. And uh, I knew we would build in about 100,000 in equity pretty quickly. So we did. 
Yeah, December 2020, I bought that property. We put maybe 30,000 into it. Uh, and it was worth about 140,000 more, like within six weeks. And we refinanced out and kept that property. And while we were doing the work during that six weeks, I was connecting with everyone in my local area on how to run this model. And actually, the reason I ended up getting into sober living and not doing something like veterans or domestic violence house or, you know, something different is I happened to call up the person who runs our local homeless shelter and ask, do you have any use for a single family home? I have one that's going to be ready in just a few weeks. Like we're fixing it up. It's going to be beautiful. And I don't want it to be just a traditional long-term rental. And she said, and she happened to be the head of like the chair of Housing First, which is a HUD organization. It's like a, a HUD program that does just this transitional housing, how to get people off the streets and into homes. And she knew everybody because she was the chair of this committee. I just got lucky with like finding the right person. And she introduced me to this whole idea of sober living and who I needed to talk to in the community and all these different programs. And by the time that the house was ready, it was like two weeks later. And we had our first placements. 